Hey guys, it's Max with Max Tech. We just got in the new 16 inch MacBook Pro and today we're gonna be comparing it to the previous 15 inch model. We're gonna look at all of the things that have changed. We're gonna look at the new keyboards, the new speakers, the microphones, the size and weight of the MacBook Pro and we're even gonna take off the back panels so we can take a look at the new fan design and also the new batteries and see any other changes that they may have made. So let's start off here with the boxes and the first thing that popped out of me and when I pulled it out of the cardboard box is the size and weight of the new 16 inch. Here we have the 15 inch and you guys could tell that there's extra space on the side, on the top. It's definitely heavier. And then if we look at the actual design, Apple changed it after many years of having the previous one to this big colorful look so we can actually see the beautiful 16 inch display. So let's go ahead and open it up. The lid is super tight. Uh, let's get the Mac out of here. I'm gonna take the plastic wrapping off and I'm actually gonna set this aside Interesting, okay. And let's take a look at the charger. So Apple did up the wattage from 87 watts now to 96 watts. Ah, this is instead of plastic, it's like a wax paper. Let's grab the previous charger out. And they are basically the same. I don't think there's any size difference. Maybe just more efficient on the inside. 87 watts, 96 watts. So the new 16 inch MacBook Pro did get heavier, about a third of a pound. And yes, I can tell the difference, but I have owned one of these, the 15 inchers ever since it came out. Uh, so I have a lot of use with them. Uh, let's stack these on top of each other, see if it's any longer. And yes, it is both wider and longer. And as far as thickness, it's hard to tell in the hand, but if we put them side by side, yes, the new 16 inch is thicker. Now let's go ahead and open these up and compare the displays. Apple went from a 15.4 inch display to a 16 inch display and yes, you can tell that the new one is larger even if you're just using this one. Not only is the screen larger, the bezels also shrunk as well. The forehead's slightly smaller, the side bezels are thinner and that definitely makes it look nicer. Now the color accuracy and brightness of the displays have not changed. They're both P3 at 500 nits but the resolution has been bumped up just a bit to compensate for the larger size. Now, one thing that has changed is that with the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, we can actually change the display refresh rate to match up better with either 24 or 25 frames per second video. And if you change it to say 47.95 Hertz, that could potentially save you a little bit of battery life. Taking a look below the displays, we could tell that the speaker grills on the 16 inch are slightly wider to compensate. And then the first thing that jumps out to me is that the touch ID sensor is now separate, not built into the touch bar. Now on the left hand side, side, we now have a physical escape key as well. A lot of people ask for that. Now looking at the keyboard, I can right away tell a couple of things. Well, first off, the keycaps themselves are raised higher up from the actual little indentation, a little cutout from the aluminum. And this little cutout is deeper to compensate for the taller keys themselves. Now along with that, the keycaps themselves are actually slightly smaller, so there's a little bit more room between them compared to the butterfly keyboard. And looking at the bottom right, we can see that the arrow keys are now back to the old way where we have this T configuration. So it's awesome to see that Apple is listening to its users. Now let's actually feel the keyboard. Now I'm used to the butterfly keys. I've used these ever since uh, actually 2015 with the 12 inch Retina MacBook, very low travel. Uh, almost nothing, but they are pretty stable. The new ones actually go back uh, to the previous design where we're not using butterfly keys, we're using scissor switches, and the difference is absolutely noticeable. I don't have a document open here, but the travel is about double what we have with the butterfly keys. And now time for something that I am very excited about, and that is our speaker comparison. Now for, I don't even know how many years, we've just had two speakers in the MacBook Pro. Nobody asked for better speakers because they were already great. Better than any Windows laptop I heard, especially in this form factor, but Apple took it to a whole nother level. We now have six speakers, including two woofers built in. So we're gonna test this out in a number of ways. Usually we just play a song, which we're gonna do, but then we're also gonna play back some uh, Atmos tests for surround sound and then some a low end bass test. So make sure you guys stick around to hear that. Let's start it out.
Now, I'm not going to lie, I do wish that the new one was at least as loud as the previous one was before, but one thing we notice is there's definitely a lot more separation between the different frequencies. The new MacBook Pro has six speakers, so it can separate the high frequencies, the mids, and then the low end, where the previous one, it has to blend all of that together with two speakers. Even though it did a great job, we definitely hear a lot more separation, a lot more, I guess, clarity in the mids, and even in the bass, it actually sounds like it's much deeper kind of comparing maybe a cell phone to a tablet you have a bigger drivers and it definitely sounds better and then in the vocals they definitely sound cleaner as well I'm not sure if you guys can hear it through this microphone but let me know what you thought so now I have the surround test running we have two speakers versus six and here there's definitely some kind of I don't know if it's fake surround or what but some simulation as the helicopter just flew kind of over my shoulder but the volume is quite a bit lower than that previous track. So let's switch over to this one. So with the surround sound test, I could definitely tell that the new MacBook Pro is more immersive, maybe because of the speakers or the added bass, but it is doing a better job, so that's great for movies. Now, another thing that's very interesting is that with this test, the new MacBook Pro actually sounds louder than the old one. All right, guys, so we just listened to a frequency sweep here, a couple different videos, and some other bass tests. Uh, and it's very interesting. The new MacBook Pro can go all the way down to 30 hertz where you can hear it, whereas the 15 inch model, it goes down to 45 hertz. So we definitely have a deeper bass here. We listened to a couple different tracks as well with a lot of bass, and you definitely could tell the separation between the bass and the other frequencies much better than the previous one. All right guys, now it's time to test out the webcam and the microphone. This is the quality from the 15.4 inch MacBook Pro, and this is the webcam quality with the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, along with the new microphone setup that Apple is calling studio quality microphones. You let me know if you think it's good enough to replace a dedicated microphone down in the comment section below. Now, let's go ahead and open these guys up and take a look at the internals. The first thing that really jumps out at me is that the fans are now made out of metal, either just the center or maybe the whole fan altogether compared to plastic over here. And the new 16 inch MacBook Pro has thicker fans, so all of this whole assembly uh, where the air goes through is actually raised up higher. Now, the other thing that really stands out these batteries, uh, they are now thicker all around, and then the ones on the side are actually longer because we have more space in this chassis, and that's what's making this battery be 100 watt hours instead of about 83 watt hours. And 100 watt hours is actually the maximum that you can legally have on an airplane. Now the other thing we see is with the old 15 inch MacBook Pro, we have all this empty space over here on the sides. This whole speaker assembly is much smaller. Here it's actually longer and making use of that extra space. Now these new fans definitely make a difference as far as performance and heat. We actually made a separate video where we took a look at a bunch of different benchmarks, both for the CPU and the graphics, and we tested out thermal throttling. So if you guys wanna see that video, we're gonna have it at the end of this one. Definitely don't miss out on that. Uh, the actual CPUs inside of these machines are identical to the ones that came out earlier this year. The base has a 2.6 gigahertz six core, and then the higher end models are eight cores. Uh, and the graphics cards, those have been updated, and there's been some pretty great Great improvements which you guys definitely want to check out in that dedicated video now the other thing that changed is the base amount of SSD for a long time we had 256 gigs of SSD base Apple has now bumped that up up to 512 so that saves you $200 right there and then the maximum went from 4 terabytes up to 8 and that is absolutely crazy to have that much storage in such a tiny lightweight machine so overall Apple made a ton of changes to this new machine this is probably the biggest jump we've had since 2000 2016 or maybe even before that we have a lot of improvements some that we asked for such as keyboards smaller bezels and other things that we didn't ask for such as uh, the speakers and I think that a lot of people are gonna be happy with this new 16 inch MacBook Pro now we're gonna have other videos coming out we're gonna do a gaming video we're gonna get the new 8 core model with the best graphics that's just starting to ship next week so make sure you guys subscribe using that little circle above and enable notifications down below and definitely go and check out our benchmark and thermal video right over there. This has been Max with Max Tech, and I will see you in the next video.